Hello, and welcome to Season 7 premiere of Great Kids Up Close for the 2017-18 school year. I'm Joel Black. And I'm Bassin Saul. Thanks for joining us. We're excited to share with you the latest from Baltimore City Public Schools. From helping the community to being inspired by our students, on Great Kids Up Close, you'll see the best of what's happening across city schools. In this episode, we check out the grand opening of a new school, first day of school visits, and see two stories of the community taking action. Plus an inspiring fundraiser at City Springs, an in-depth look at Gardenville Elementary School where all students are welcome. First up, let's head out to Xavier and Marquette who were there for the grand opening of Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. Take it away. Three, two, one, go! Hey everyone, Xavier Plater and Marquette Doty coming to you from the first official ribbon cutting ceremony of the 21st Century School Building Program. It's happening right here in East Baltimore at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. Excitement, Excitement and, and anticipation, anticipation is in the, the air. air. School is number one priority. Educating our children has to be the number one priority for our community. With over 300 people in attendance, we're here to speak with students, parents, and community members to hear what they have to say about this beautiful new school. Can you talk to us a little bit about your tour and your experience here? Okay, um, when we went on the tour, we got to see the first and the second floor, and it was amazing. The school is huge, and it's a lot of rooms to better our education, and it gives the students who are in the neighborhood and the community to be able to use this space for their learning experience as well. Hopefully, they like it here, because I know I will. We need to provide opportunities for them today. If we don't do it, there is no future for them. From Mayor Pugh to Lieutenant Governor Boyd to our own CEO, Dr. Santalisis, special guests have come out to support this major turning point for Baltimore City Public Schools. So when you set your expectations high, we will reach up for them. Let's not lower expectations for our children. Let's lift them up. I think what's great is that the space was really designed to represent um, some of the kinds of learning um, that young people will be engaging in here. So this is a project-based learning school, so a lot of the convertible space that you see um, will be places where kids are actually doing long-range projects, a lot of in-depth research, you'll see that. It'll be a heavy technology school. If they get a good foundation in terms of an educational foundation, they're going to be able to bring additional development and additional jobs and opportunities in the future to the city. I can really see how the collaborative spaces are going to help our students. How'd you like it? Yeah, most definitely. Their new state-of-the-art technology was mind-blowing. For sure. For sure. Don't forget, school starts September 5th. I'm Xavier Plater. And this has been Mark with Doty for the City School Student Media Team. Have, Have a, a great, great school year. year. Now that's a 21st century school. Agreed. I wonder how many families will be moving to that school community. Now let's take a look at a special community project at Cecil Elementary that took place right before the first day of school. I think the entire community is excited about the mural. The fact that everyone had a part in it, I think really makes a difference. Teachers participated, along with myself, we all actually got to participate and I think Knowing that little part of the mural that you helped to paint really brings togetherness for the community. I can't think of a better way to launch the school year than with this absolutely gorgeous mural that was designed and actually painted by Cecil family. Because we believe that the arts have the ability to transform schools from the inside to the outside, from the ground to the ceiling, and everywhere in between. My experience was really nice. I enjoyed doing my part of the mural, and it's, it's such a good part of the school now. Turn it up. To the left. We worked with student artwork, and it was really a collaboration of, like, of myself, the designer, and student artwork, and feedback from the school. And it, it was so awesome how how like well it came together. Um, I think the mural, mural is going to help just revitalize the area, make it somewhere inviting to come. You know, usually when you drive past, you know, certain schools, um, you see kind of gloom and doom. So I think, you know, just having that brightness of like the, all the different colors, the primary colors, I think just automatically you're going to have a sense of, okay, this is, some, this is something exciting. Yeah. 
That is one beautiful mural, and the great thing to see as you enter the school. Yes, it is. Okay, time to our first break of the show. We'll be right back. Modernizing school buildings for Baltimore City students has begun, like right here at Arundel Elementary School. Amazing new spaces to learn in. Yes, through this program, schools and communities are being brought together in a brand new way. And I'm so proud to be part of this effort. That's right. Construction jobs are open and internships are available. Discover more about the program at www.baltimore21stcenturyschools.org. Building a brighter future together. Hi, students and families. You can get to thousands of free online books in three easy steps. First, log on to www.kidsa-z.com or download the Kids A through Z app. Next, enter the teacher username. You should have received this already from your teacher. If you haven't, ask for it at school tomorrow. And finally, click on Reading Room and pick a book. If you need any help, please ask your child's teacher. In Baltimore City Public Schools, students are building homes, circuits, walls, and mobile apps, making computer designs come to life and learning life-saving skills, managing banks and courtrooms, producing television shows and business plans, creating elaborate menus and finding solutions to elaborate problems, graduating with industry certification and the skills they need to move on to higher education, great jobs, and success in the future. This is Career and Technology Education. I just really just wanted to take care of my family a lot. I knew that like I could be the one to sort of make my family proud, make the city proud. And so when I'm like studying late at night, I just remember that my family is like dependent on me. And so it means a lot to me that if, if I can just make that dream come true. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I am a Baltimore City Public School student. I'm a lot of Baltimore City Public School. I'm a little Baltimore City. Salut, I'm a student of Baltimore City Public School. I'm a student of Baltimore City Public School. I'm a student of the Baltimore City Public School. We are Baltimore City Public School students. And we celebrate diversity every day. Welcome back to Great Kids Up Close. In this part of our premiere, we are going to take a look at the schools we visited on the first day of school. First stop, the brand new Frederick Elementary School. Let's check it out. Welcome back, City School. I'm your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> You're in my class. Absolutely beautiful, and it's such a fun space to have the kids come in and start a brand new year in a brand new building. and wait for the teacher to call on you. Work, gym, um, science lab and stuff. I swear to goodness I didn't know it was this many kids in this neighborhood. So I see a lot more parents willing to bring their kids to school. So we want students to be able to make wise decisions in solving their own problems and leading the change in their community and in their own lives. So re-energize the community and have those businesses come back, have families come back who may have left the area. So we're really hoping that our success here will be a jump start for the rest of the community. Wow, these new schools are really something special. I bet those kids are so happy. And parents too. Now let's swing over to Mary E. Rodman Elementary where they are going through an amazing transformation. What this 100% project does is it allows four schools to work together to share best practice to build off of each other. So for me, it was just an excellent opportunity to just partner with like-minded people who really want to take on some of the most challenging schools. You already see warm and inviting classrooms where young people want to be. You already see in the second week some routines already are moving effortlessly. And what that means is kids are ready for teaching and learning. Peace, Slither. Peace, Slither. 
There's just kind of been a rebirth, there's been energy, there's been enthusiasm that's kind of been injected into these schools. Uh, our students here at Mary Rodman, uh, they were ready. Uh, they've always been ready to do great things. Uh, they just needed a little bit of an extra push. You see parents who are like, wow, you know, I'm really glad my child is here, or this is so much different, or a principal reached out, and I really feel as if they care about my child. Oh, good, so that, does that mean if you're gonna leave tomorrow, somebody be ready to take my job so I can retire? Yeah. Who's gonna be ready to take my job? Oh, I love it, I love it. There are great staff members here in Baltimore City, and we need to be opening up practice and sharing what's going on so that more schools can learn from that. We just need the whole team, whether it's teachers, families, students, they all need to be working together. It is possible, and it's work that's good. Way to go, Mary E. Rahman Elementary. We wish you all the best this school year. A visit in the spring might be in order to see how things are going. And now for our last stop on the first day of school where we check in at Excel Academy, a school committed to giving our students a chance at succeeding. Let's go. Let's go. Tell Let's go. But at the end of the day, I think that we really give them a safe haven and we give them a, a non-judgmental ear. Um, and I think that's important to our kids not to be judged and um, to be accepted for who they are. I want y'all to know where our heart's coming from. Because yeah. some people judge us how we look and when we fail, we fail me, stuff like that. This year, I'm going to be more positive, come to school on time and stop leaving school early, you feel me? We done lost a lot of people for real that went up here. That went yeah. up here. Trying to get my grades up. Trying to, do, trying to do good for my mother. Like, it can show that I can be the best at anything. And, I can, and if I put my mind to anything, I can do it. I think that's the most rewarding. Like we plant the seeds and you watch them grow. They may not grow immediately, but eventually you start to see them sprout in different ways. And I think that's the most rewarding. Nobody not gonna chase you to do what you wanna do. You gotta do what you wanna do. So I just had to motivate myself to come to school, do what I need to do. I had a couple of problems, but now I'm at a better school trying to do better things with my life. I'm at the age when I should be able to be able to finish school about the time I turn 18 and move on with my life, get a job, and start from there. And I think they want structure. I mean, they want structure. They want order in their life. Some of them, their lives are so chaotic some days that they want that structure and they want that order. And I think this is where they can come and get a sense of, you know, normalcy and, and really try to be productive members of society. Keep up the hard work, Excel. It will pay off. That's right. And our first day coverage has concluded, so let's take another break. Stay tuned. Work is underway on modernizing school buildings, like here at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. The type of school buildings we deserve. Our new schools will provide community-friendly spaces and be better for our environment. They will allow for innovative technology and 21st century teaching and learning. The 21st Century School Buildings Program is positively affecting my education and my city. That's right. Learn more about this major commitment from the state, city of Baltimore, and city schools by visiting baltimore21stcenturyschools.org. Building, Building a brighter future together. College life so far, how you expect it? I mean, it's not the glamour that you see on television and everything. I mean, it's a lot of work, especially transitioning from being a high school student to a college student because you have like a lot of free time so you have to learn how to balance that like who your professor is and how to study how to make sure you're on your best for each and every class so it's like really having to have self-control over yourself to say I want to do my best. Did you know that students who have a regular diet of nutritious foods are healthier, have more energy, and do better in school? That's why City Schools is increasing its healthy and fresh food options for every meal served during the school day. I love that they have my favorite vegetables and fruits. By eating healthy, I'm going to get more smart. If you don't be healthy, you're going to get sick. Students who eat well, do well. So be sure to choose healthy options to keep your body energized and your mind focused and ready to learn. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between your experience in city schools and your experience in college? I think that the main difference is how people act. 
So in Baltimore City, we have sort of like this way of kidding with each other, whereas not, that's not really like the, the social norm out with the, some of the county kids at UMBC, and so they'll take it kind of seriously at times. It's, it's just it's like sort of different cultural aspects. These are our future, engineers and electricians. Software designers and doctors. Construction workers and child care providers. They will build apps and houses, create menus and video games. Work with cutting edge technology and kids. They'll be found in classrooms and courtrooms, construction sites and computer labs. They are Baltimore City public school students. They are career and technology education. Welcome back to the season seven premiere of Great Kids Up Close. For our next story, we head out to City Springs Elementary School, where they had hard work raising money for hurricane victims. So let's check it out. Our first day of school, we had a conversation with the students, myself and Ms. Hughes, and they were really drawn to what was happening in Houston and really inspired to help out. So it became a completely student-led project. Um, they created all the posters, they set the goals for fundraising, they decided to donate to the American Red Cross. So it really became a student-led project that I was happy to just watch and uh, see amazing things that they did. We wake up every day and we could go walk downstairs and go to our kitchens, go in the refrigerator and get something to drink. In Houston, you can't walk downstairs and go to your refrigerator and get something to drink. And we wanted to help others. We also want to tell you to be donating to like clothes, okay. supplies, water, and Diapers, anything, like, okay, take cool. almost everything. I'm giving back to a community, so it's like communities helping communities. And if we were in this position, we would want, like, we would want some charities helping us. And their whole city flooded, so they can't, they can't really do nothing. Houston's a city they didn't really know anything about until this all came up. And so myself and Ms. Hughes put in place some different research that they could do. Uh, they created some informational pamphlets. They presented to the elementary teachers, they presented to the elementary school students, and they really got engaged with both the city of Houston and learned about what's currently happening there. Houston is like one of the largest cities and they got a whole bunch of people, so it's like when that happened, we lost. It's like a lot of jobs, a lot of homes. We got another $200 donated by the elementary and middle school kids and parents. It's like above sea level and is is a lot of concrete in Houston so it's nowhere for the water to go. It's just it's just a lot of water backed up. Two hundred thirty. Really? Yeah. Oh. So do you think we're gonna make our goal by next week? Yep. Yeah, we already got three. And then this just this school, we gotta do the other school too. We already got three. I got thirty. I think we're gonna exceed the goal. Yeah. You think so? All right. All right. One of our City Springs attributes is empathy. And so we really hope to instill that in all our students when they leave our school. And we believe with the eighth graders taking lead on this, they're really building their understanding of empathy and what it means to put yourself in someone else's position. Today alone, we raised $299.65. So, giving back is, is good, even when you're not in the best of positions yourself. Be more for Houston. Building empathy and learning about parts of our country at the same time. Nice! Next up is a story at Thomas Johnson Elementary Middle School, where Under Armour and the Heart of America work together on an extreme school makeover. Let's see how it works. The students have so much, they just get pride from a project like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just really builds a lot of pride. It motivates the students to come every day. You know, it's a, a big scale project. The entire gymnasium's been renovated. Uh, new floor, gymnasium grade floor, new backboards. I don't know that there is really words. And this is like a completely different space. Nothing has, nothing has been able to be done um, in this gym since 1977. <laughs> we're not going to have weeds in our ground anymore, and we're going to have awesome murals on the wall. Well, it was so plain. It was just a solid blue color above the lockers, so now it's got a nice fresh mural in its row homes. And that's where all of our students live, so it's what's familiar to them, and it's 
very artistically done with bright colors, so it, it's very attractive. After talking with this school district and to learning uh, what communities are looking for, and frankly, when we talk to young people and, and hearing them wanting this really inspiring, cool space to go as a brand, so that we've got a lot of talented teammates that can come in and help do that work. It's going to make more people want to come to our school because we have all this new stuff now. So it's fun to watch the kids because day one they don't know exactly what to think, and then as they start seeing things happen and you start asking them, what is it, what color would you like, and what is it that you want in here, and they see that their opinion counts, um, and then the next day they come in and they see that you took what they wanted and you brought it to life, it's been really cool. And the spirit, you know, even though we're early in the school year, every day they're walking in with enthusiasm. We are so grateful to Under Armour and Heart of America for making this happen and uh, the, the entire school community is grateful for this. Big shout out to Under Armour and Heart of America for making over this school. This community is so happy and so are we. Okay, so now it's time for the question of the show. Earlier we visited a few schools on the first day of school. At Mary E. Radman Elementary, what is the name given to the group of students working together to improve achievement, culture, and engagement? Is it called the A, 100% Project, B, Schools United, C, 110% Project, or D, Just Go to School? Everyone, guess what? We'll give you the answer after these messages. Stay tuned. School cafeterias have been making some changes. Whole grains, whole milk, fresh fruits and vegetables, some of them delivered from the district's own farm, and it's all free. Every city school student can now eat breakfast and lunch free every day. It's been good so far. Because it, it's like they gave me a choice, and I like having choice. Now that's something to snack on. Work is underway on modernizing school buildings, like here at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. The type of school buildings we deserve. Our new schools will provide community-friendly spaces and be better for our environment. They will allow for innovative technology and 21st century teaching and learning. The 21st Century School Buildings Program is positively affecting my education and my city. That's right. Learn more about this major commitment from the state, city of Baltimore, and city schools by visiting Baltimore21stCenturySchools.org. Building a brighter future together. A lot of exciting things are happening each and every day in Baltimore City Public Schools. Our students are learning, excelling, growing, and achieving as they prepare for college and careers. You can see our students in action and the work they're producing right here on Education Channel 77 and online. If you'd like to watch more stories on the exciting things our students are doing in Baltimore City Public Schools, please visit www.vimeo.com slash city schools. I'm a first generation college student, so there wasn't much help from like my, from home with the process. Like they encouraged me, but they didn't really know how to go about the process. So I worked here at North Avenue last year as student Congress president, and I received a mentor, Dr. Jessup, who works here, and she helped me with the college process. Her and her husband. If I didn't have her, then it would have been way harder than what it was. Have you ever tasted a squaffle? How about a not so crabby patty? Tune in to the City Schools Cooking Show to see the delicious things culinary students are cooking and serving up, featuring great recipes with low cost ingredients fit for healthy eating. You can watch right here on Education Channel 77 or go to www.vimeo.com slash city schools for the latest episode. Everyone has a role to play when it comes to making sure each student is in school every day. By working together, the entire school community can create a school climate that makes school a place where students want to be, and a place where teaching and learning can thrive. 
Schools where students and families feel welcomed, supported, and respected reinforce a culture of high attendance expectations and are exciting places to be. So do your part in making sure that all of our students are in school every day, ready to learn. Welcome back. So now is the time to answer the question of the show. Earlier, we visited a few schools on the first day of school. At Mary E. Rahman Elementary, what is the name given to the group of schools working together and to improve achievement, culture, and engagement? Is it called the A, 100% Project, B, Schools United, C, 110% Project, or D, Just Go to School? The correct answer is A, the 100% Project, and we wish all the schools in this group the very best. In our final segment, we will have an uplifting and inspiring visit to Garnville Elementary School. It's the first of many visits we'll be making to schools this year in order to provide you with a real look on what our schools experience. Roll it. Go twinkle, little star, how I want. Every student in the school is important to us. No matter who they are, where they come from, we want to make sure that they all feel like they're at home when they come into the garden. And so we take pride in that. We want to make sure that they get a high quality education. We want to make sure that they feel safe and that they're productive. school is the best because our teachers here work as hard as they possibly can to make sure that we have all our work done and that we can go to the best schools and best high schools and we can go to college and have a, and have a great life and get ready for whatever comes. If I say play, we are going to move around, okay? But if I say stop, what should we do? Stop! Stop! I mean, PlayWorks is basically uh, a group that, one, makes sure we have safe recess, we have safe play at all times. Uh, every game that we play is organized so that no one has to worry about anybody getting uh, hurt. Another thing that we do, we have a junior coach program in which we elect fourth and fifth graders to be mini coaches. So they help us with the function of recess, with during the day and also before school. It helps motivate them. They come to school earlier, so we have a lot going on with recess in the morning. And then uh, after that, during the day, they're excited to help Coach Trez either get hula hoops or jump ropes or even facilitate a game. So it helps create leadership. Really developing the students' understanding about how multiplication and division are actually related to one another. So they're not really taught in separate the way they used to be. They're kind of taught in tangent. Um, and then the students are really beginning to understand that there are pictures that they can begin to develop to help them really understand the idea of multiplication and that multiplication is really related to addition. We are really working on collaborative conversations. So they may have been doing turning and talking, but we want deep conversation. So we're really looking at that academic conversation to really dig deeper into the text and have a better understanding of the text. Um, we are looking at our speaking and listening standards through the Common Core and we're really working on that. So let's share our ideas and respond to what we're reading or writing. So right now the system has the process where they're having students talk about what they like to be when they grow up. They have, they have an essay contest. My dad is a civil engineer so he's taught me some of the things he does and I like doing art so designing stuff so that way I can become a civil engineer the great work that we see posted around the school. Uh, we take pride in it, that's why we leave it up. And, uh, and as she adds to it, new pieces so the students can walk around and say, hey, look, I did that. The staff is amazing at Gardenville. Um, we have teachers that help each other. We are um, a community of learners as adults that we are constantly researching and sharing ideas and we collaborate amongst one another. We're very, very excited about the future of our students and our school. and. Um, the best is yet to come. As you can see, all are welcome at the garden. So that's all for our season seven premiere. Thank you for joining us and be sure to watch Education Channel 77 and for more, head to vimeo.com slash city schools. Or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We are everywhere. And if your school would like us to cover a story, email communications at bcps.k12.md.us. I'm Bastion Saw. And I'm Joel Black. See you next time on Great Kids Up Close. Bye! Bye.